Welcome to the Driver's Line. I'm Greg. And I'm Jordan. And today, we've got a conversation for you. Our conversation today takes us back down memory lane. Mm. So we're talking about cars that we have either owned or come across or really wanted to own in the past that just got away from us. Either uh, we couldn't hold on to them or we thought about buying them and we couldn't. That's so. right. Yeah, just kind of like lost loves, you know, yeah. ones that you really would have liked to have or bought, but just went away for different reasons. Yeah. Couldn't purchase, thought better of it. Etc. Yeah. So uh, we're going to each go through two of our former uh, lost loves. I like that. That's, that's, that's good. It's catchy. Uh, and talk about why we liked them and, and why we still wanted them. All so, right. Why don't you kick us off? All right. Sounds good. So uh, my first one takes me back to my childhood. Ooh. All right. Uh, what van are we talking about it's today? It's not a van. <laughs> Although, I do miss my old GMC <laughs> Safari. Now that you say. All right. But... <laughs> Uh, no, it takes me back even further. Okay. Um, this is a model that's super popular right now, uh, and that is the K5 Blazer. Ah, yeah, yes. so uh, this was a car that my family first purchased as their first family car. So uh, when my parents immigrated from Malta here, um, they were gifted a Pontiac Catalina station wagon that Ooh. ran for a couple months. Okay. <laughs> And then what happened to that Catalina? Yeah, it's gone now. Oh. Um, and <laughs> so it was a big old boat. Um, and this was before I was a thought. But um, eventually well, the, my... Well, your parents would have called the good old days. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my parents saved up enough money that they purchased their first vehicle, which was a 1983 K5 Blazer. That was, All right. That was, it was a brown. two-door, yeah. It was a two-door, yeah. yeah. Brown with a white top. Ooh. All right. Um, and I just have really fond memories of it. Um, I just uh, it took us everywhere as a kid. Um, it's hard to like imagine like nowadays how everyone just wants a four door, right? Back then. Was, well, like, I'm, I'm yeah. like, as, as a parent, I'm like, God, I love your parents for putting those kids in the back seat. Yeah, exactly. Not yeah. easy to get to. I'm I sure know. like all the front one did was probably go like this. Basically, yeah. So we had to make it work. <laughs> um, but I just loved like riding in that thing because it was taller than everything on the road. Um, so as a kid, like you just feel like you're in a monster truck, right? Yeah. And every time like my, my mom came around, my mom's pretty short, she's five feet tall, right? So she'd drive this to pick me up in school and I'd just get to run up to it, right? And all these kids are like, oh my God, it's like <laughs> you drive a monster truck to school. Um, it has a, a legendary 305 V8, uh, not super powerful, 160 horsepower, but um, mm. you know, it's not a car that I would want to have as a daily, right? It's a fun weekend car. Absolutely, um, especially as economical as it probably is. <laughs> Not very Not single very. digit MPGs. Um, that's fine. Um, but it, it speaks to a time, I think, of simpler times, obviously, um, and times when I think Chevy dominated the market when it comes to, I mean, it's still pretty dominant when it comes to SUVs, mm -hmm. but um, no one second guessed the capability of that truck. No. Um, uh, and supremely capable, well built, long lasting. Yeah. I mean, as long as it stayed out of the rusty states. Yeah, that's, that's fair. That's fair. Um, but nowadays, I mean, you can't touch them. No. <laughs> you cannot touch them. I mean, you're for a mild, mildly well kept example, you're think you're talking in like the mid twenties. Oh. Uh, and then when you're going into fully rebuilt ones, you're upwards of $60,000 easily. Oh. Um, so I kind of wish we would have held on to it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, because I just think it would be such a cool weekend car um, and it's capable. I mean, you could take the top off just mm -hmm. like a Jeep Wrangler. Um, it's a few more steps, a few more bolts and stuff, but it had like the retractable glass before it was popular. Right now, everybody loves that the 400 yep. has and stuff. Um, it had all those features, power windows. I mean, yeah, yeah. Well, it had some, yeah. some well equipedness to it, but yeah. uh, it's also really capable. So I, I miss that truck. It's cool. Yeah. Well, that's a good choice. Yeah. Fun trucks too. Yeah, for sure. All right, my first choice is the opposite end of the spectrum. All right. It's a vehicle that I was extremely close to purchasing mm. uh, probably in 2014, I think it was actually. Um, at the time, I had um, a Lexus IS250 with the manual. Ah, yes. Which was one of the worst cars I've ever had. <laughs> it's, it's been featured on our it's podcast. It's been featured on the podcast before. Um, just completely gutless, yeah. not fun to drive. The manual was out of a Tacoma. But certainly very reliable. Very reliable. Mm -hmm. I mean, nothing, yeah. nothing there broke. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> and it was certified pre-owned, so like Lexus fixed anything that didn't break, um, gotcha. which was nothing. Nothing. So, anyways, <clears throat> I wanted out of that car. And so sure. um, I came across a one owner at a local Mercedes-Benz dealer over Winston. Mm. It was a one owner, 2006, 911 Cabriolet. Ooh. With the manual. Wow. Arctic silver over black, 
for nice. a good price. It was like nice. 30,000 bucks. It was only had 50,000 okay. miles on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so this is again, 2014. So the car was only, yeah. you know, eight years old yeah, at that yeah. point in time. Um, tremendous value, but I just couldn't get over the hump of where the numbers were. Mm -hmm. Like they just wanted to give me so little for my Lexus. And I was like, Oh yeah, I need more than that. And so the frugal side of me won out over the fun side. Cause sure. if it had been a coupe, yeah, it would have been a done or deal. an S. <laughs> I probably would have just been like, screw it. Damn the torpedo. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah. my, my, my wife was my girlfriend at the point in time. And she was even along with me for the test ride. She had to ride in the back of the oh, cab. Oh, gosh. Which those seat backs are literally <laughs> vertical. Yeah. So God love are. her. She knew it's what not she was, even a full seat back. No, it's not even a full seat <laughs> And she knew what she's getting into. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> from, true. From that that's minute. right. So I knew she was a keeper at that point when that's she was right. willing to ride in the back seat yes. of the 911 For convertible sure. that I ended up not buying. But I do regret that car because mm. I would have been able to get into the Porsches a lot sooner, a lot earlier. Yeah. Again, what do you think, you know, with relatively, you know, maybe 20,000 more miles, what that 911 would pull today? That is true. About 30,000 yeah. bucks. Yeah. Yeah. That's so I would have been able to own it basically for free. Yeah. Um, for right. all that time and you know it would have just been a, a real real fun car to own but decisions were made uh well you know decisions were made but you never know 911 could be in your future yeah we'll see if we can get another one or yeah. we'll get one someday not another one <laughs> never had one i think a 911 is a great example of something that we would covet over and miss and, and, and i think that's a yeah. quintessential choice for sure because i mean like you're saying it holds on to its value mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely yeah, so yeah. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> it's all good. It's, I'm There's plenty of them out there. I'll find another one. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So um, I'll change gears, but not from yours, actually. I'm going to go into the sports car realm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sports cars. My two choices are so polar opposite, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when I was looking at a Miata, um, one of the other considerations I had thrown in uh, was uh, MR2, which I actually steered myself away from because it was just not, it was not it. I mean, it was, it's fun, but it's just too basic. Oh, this is the MR Spider, right? Yeah, yeah. the MR2 Spider, right. Um, and there's no storage in it, whatever. Um, and eventually I landed with the Boxer S, which I love. Um, there was another option though that I was considering that I didn't get. Um, I didn't even entertain it, honestly, because I felt like this is just not realistic, <laughs> you know? But uh, after owning a, a high performance mid-engine sports car, I kind of am curious to see if I could have done it. And it's the Lotus Elise. <laughs> yeah. The Lotus Elise is a siren that sings to anybody oh. who loves sports cars because it is the distillation of a sports car. It is down to its most basic elements in Colin Chapman's famous ethos, simplify and add lightness. And add lightness. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I keep finding myself like looking at them on Facebook Marketplace, um, just seeing what's out there. And I mean, they're, you know, when you think about the performance that it gives you, the prices aren't horrendous. No, they're not. And again, that's something <laughs> that's going to be like completely flat. Like the joke used to be that you could buy any Lotus Lease you wanted for 35,000 bucks. And then when you sold it, you'd sell it for $35,000. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, that, that has holding. ticked up since then. So it's probably closer to 40 now. Yeah. But yeah. the logic still holds true it's a car that you can buy and own and as long as you don't crack that fiberglass clamshell <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> you're gonna be good yeah i mean these the the underpinnings of that car i mean are so fantastic it, it comes with a toyota 2zz engine mm -hmm. so it's gonna be reliable um and they look fantastic oh they look um, they look the business and the only really the only worry i would have driving one is how small they are they, they are and that is something that has come into mind because like driving a porsche is it's a smaller car, but it's not, it's not tiny. nearly as yeah, small as a Lotus. Exactly. Like, I mean, the Miata is kind of the same thing, right? Yeah. Like, especially the earlier Miatas, like you can get lost in the blind spot of a Suburban. For sure. Very easily. Yeah. So um, I think it'll be fun to own. And who knows, maybe down the road, that could be a direction I go. Um, I'm just, I really do enjoy the Porsche aspect of having the dual trunks and having the leather interior. And, the, you know, it, it's nice. It's how, many, how many trunks does the uh, Elise have? None. Zero trunks. <laughs> so, again, that's another reason I didn't pick it, right? But, uh, you know, down the road, who knows? Maybe I'll have a dedicated Elise there track you go. car. Well, I mean, it, it's hard to argue with Elise because, I mean, yeah. again, just a fantastic car. It's on every gearhead's, you know, bucket list yeah. along with some sort of alpha at some point. Yeah. Um, 
but yeah, it, it's hard to argue with that because it's a great choice. I, I've got it on mine as well. I'd love to have it at least someday. Mm -hmm. um, there's someone over in Durham who's been trying to sell a Series <laughs> 1 at least for a while, and oh, I'm really? like, hmm. <laughs> Hopefully my wife isn't watching this podcast. <laughs> uh, well, and it's funny you mentioned Alpha because my close contender to this uh, has been a recent temptation. It was the Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio because that sound... I just can't get over the sound, but uh, nonetheless, Lotus eked it out just a bit. An outstanding yeah. SUV, yeah. All right, sticking with sports cars mm. is, is my second one, and this actually happened when I was looking for my last NC Miata. Mm. Um, I was really, you know, targeting, I had like, you know, a budget of like, you know, 10 to 15, obviously trying to stay cheaper, sure. um, to find a nice uh, NC Miata, so I ended up finding my NC2 for a little bit less than 10 grand with only 28,000 miles. Nice. Which was, a great purchase. Yeah. Um, it was a little rough around the edges, but ended up, you know, needed some TLC. And again, I was, you know, I was using it for this is when we did motorsports for the masses. Right. So we did the short course driving. Yeah. I was going to get it ready for track days. I was going to use it for autocross. And so, for you know, it was going to be something that was going to get beat up a little bit right. in the process. So, you know, having one that was a little rough around the edges didn't exactly. really bother me that much. Right. And, you know, I was able to fix a lot of the things that were wrong with it anyways. Yeah. Um, it looked great. Easily and cheaply, right? Because yeah. it's a Miata. Yeah. But in the course of my shopping, I found another local car for sale mm. and this was actually at a mitsubishi dealer oh mitsubishi i know uh, let me guess it was a gallant no <laughs> because they are <laughs> not they don't have good new cars to sell they actually started buying a lot of really good used cars to try to draw people into their showrooms no one wanted that eclipse huh? yes and so this was a 2004 rio yellow honda s2000 mm, beautiful beautiful car yeah which yeah. is the ap2 yep. version of the s2000 which mm. has the 2.2 liter f22 c1 engine mm. still 240 horsepower but a little bit more torque a little bit punchier down mm -hmm. low so you don't have to wring its neck just to get around town which is nice famously yeah yeah mm -hmm. and so i mean it had every vin tag on it which is a big thing within the s2000 community because so many of them have been crash damaged mm -hmm. this or that so it had every single vin tag matching on the car wow. only 20 some odd thousand miles on it about 24000 bucks is what they wanted for it, which if you could buy that now, now you'd be stupid not to, right? Yes, for um, sure. And I even knew that then. I just wasn't looking to spend that much money sure. on a sports car at that point in time, yeah. especially for what I was going to use it for. I would have felt terrible taking that S2000 to autocross. I would have felt terrible taking it to Motorsports Mass. I would have felt terrible taking it to track days because it was too nice. Totally understand that. Absolutely. And so it would have, it's, it's a great garage weekend car. Yeah. You can still have fun with it, but you just don't really beat on it. Right, right. right. Um, so I, I really struggled with that decision. I was like, man, I even made them an offer. <laughs> oh, you went yeah, as far as that, yeah, huh? Okay. Yeah, didn't, didn't, did stick. Yeah, it did not stick. <laughs> That's... It is what it is. It is what it is, and it's fine. You know, yeah. it's all good, but I, I do think about that S2000 because I'd already had one and seen me on at that point in mm -hmm. time, and so I'm like, well, maybe I just need to try something new. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I, I was not at all displeased with my second Miata because it was a fantastic, fantastic no, yeah. car. That was a great car. Yeah, I mean, the S2000, I think, is another one of those siren calls for all both enthusiasts, yeah. right? I, think, I don't think there's a single person who's into cars that does not like the S2000. Right. It's I mean, got that it's, super cool cluster, right? I yeah. mean, like, it goes back to, like, the 80s with the, like, digital, yes. you know, output. Um, it's got the real wedged nose shape, mm -hmm. like, almost kind of like a shark nose on yeah. it. And just, yeah. it's a very unique looking little roadster. It's a classically designed, and it's a, its focus is on performance mm -hmm. and the drive, which yep. I, I think is really, really critical. I think that... It's a, it's a lot like the Elite. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I yeah, so. yeah. Except I think you have a few more creature comforts in that Yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's definitely going to be a car where you're going to enjoy spending a little bit more time on the drive. Yeah. A couple more miles. <laughs> yeah, a couple more miles, more comfortable seats, yeah. power top, you know, yeah. things of that nature. Right. But, you know, I mean, it was an analog for the Boxster in the day. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So just with Honda reliability. Great choice. Great choice with the S2000. And one fewer trunk. That is true. Yeah, one fewer <laughs> trunk. That's fair. <laughs> All right. Well, we hope you enjoyed our episode on the cars that got away. That's right. If you have any of these you want to share with us, drop them in the comments. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us on The Driver's Line. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe to make sure you don't miss a thing.